So I asked myself, why are there so many huge pieces in B flat? I mean, do you think it's a coincidence that Beethoven's longest and most, in, in, in terms of length and scope, piano sonata, string quartet, and piano trio are over 50 minutes long and all in the key of B flat, and then Schubert writes a sonata like that. Brahms has major pieces in B flat. Yes. On the NASA website, they discovered a black hole that was resonating on the note B flat 57 octaves below middle C. Oh, that's this is on the NASA website. No, 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 I'm sorry. I knew this was going to happen. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> First of all, as you know, pitch has changed since since the time of Schubert. His B flat is not our B flat. If you're going to relate it to this NASA thing, okay. then we've got to be scientific. So you reject this? No, not necessarily. But before I answer that question, we have See, to start thinking. I think it appeals to the universal language of music, and if the universe is resonating on the note B-flat, and that's the note that Beethoven and Schubert but and Brahms uh, choose to create their biggest but, monumental but, but, masterpieces. Now, wait a minute. Don't you think uh, that's significant? Uh, for, and see, this is what I would tell an audience who's never heard it before, <laughs> to get them in some kind of mental space where they're contemplating the cosmos and into this you know, metaphysical realm that I believe the Schubert first movement lives in.